carrier-free nanoparticles by Abir Senyal with the Nguyen Lab at UNC Chapel Hill. Nanoparticles range in size from about 1 to 100 nanometers, which is a similar size to proteins, DNA, and viruses. Nanoparticles are at least 10 times bigger than a glucose molecule, while an entire cell is at least 100 times larger than a nanoparticle. A grain of salt is 10,000 times bigger, and a tennis ball is 1 million times bigger than a nanoparticle. Nanoparticles act as vehicles to transport drugs. In this case, a nanoparticle is like a bus, and the proteins are like passengers in the bus. When there is a cell in need of a drug, like the compromised cell on the bottom, the bus, or the nanoparticle, will take the drug to it. But how does the bus know which cell to go to? They have a bus driver who knows the exact location of the destination. These bus drivers are like single-chain variable fragment antibodies, which are antibody fragments that are a part of the nanoparticle that can recognize specific cells. The targeted and controlled release of drugs in specific cells is not the only advantage of using nanoparticles for therapeutic purposes. Their small size allows them to reach and penetrate organs and tissues. Nanoparticles also have higher efficiency of drug delivery, as well as enhanced safety. There are many different types of nanoparticles that have different functions in different industries. Some of the most common types of nanoparticles in drug delivery are polymeric nanoparticles and liposomes, but other types of nanoparticles include amphiphilic cyclodextrins, dendromers, gold nanoparticles, micelles, carbon nanotubes, and quantum dots. So what are carrier-free nanoparticles? A conventional nanoparticle is similar to a plastic wrapped chocolate, while an M&M would represent a carrier-free nanoparticle. Imagine that the chocolate is a drug. The wrapper of the conventional nanoparticle is not meant to be eaten. For the M&M, the chocolate is still the drug, but now the outer layer of the M&M not only serves as a protective, but it is also edible. Thus, it serves several functions. In a carrier-free nanoparticle, the carrier not only serves as a protective shell, but as a pharmacological drug itself. Research has been done on a particular carrier-free nanoparticle that has the potential to serve as an effective treatment for cancer. Cancer is essentially the uncontrolled and abnormal growth of cells that often result in the formation of tumors. What makes cancer especially dangerous is when it metastasizes, which is when it begins traveling through the body and spreading, causing tumors to grow all around. Dr. Julianne Nguyen's lab at UNC at Chapel Hill has developed nanoplexes to help combat this metastasis. These nanoplexes are made up of RNA and proteins and similar to M&Ms, they are carrier-free. They also use single-chain variable fragments to target and recognize macrophages and cancer cells. Without the nanoplexes present, cancer cells from a malignant tumor can freely pass through the bloodstream, which can then lead to metastasis. Cancer cells have receptors known as CXCR4, which the nanoplex can bind to. When the nanoplexes are present, they can bind to cancer cells and significantly inhibit their migration, decreasing the chance of metastasis. These nanoplexes are made of antibody fragments and microRNA. The nanoplex serves as a delivery vehicle for the microRNA, which can then impact immune cells in positive ways in order to better fight cancer. The effect of different types of the nanoplex were tested on breast cancer cells. Each type of nanoplex was used for a set period of time on the cancer cells and the resulting percent cell viability was measured, with a lower cell viability indicating a more effective treatment. After only 48 hours, the cell viability of the cancer cells decreased significantly when treated with the nanoplexes. After two weeks, all the nanoplexes reduced the cell viability to approximately 25%. The nanoplex with the microRNA was the most effective.
the nanoplexes were also tested in preclinical studies with encouraging results. The nanoplex with that microRNA is denoted by the red line, which can be seen to have inhibited tumor growth the most and had a significant impact in comparison to the control. The second generation of these nanoparticles are currently in development, so maybe one day they can become highly effective treatments in cancer and humans as well. Thank you for watching.